Where on earth is Ket Walski? What's poppin'? Hey everybody, Kit Walsh here, checking in with another one of our hashtag Earl Grey Pour Up videos. Today, I've got kind of a quick one for you. It is related to Lower Decks and an interview that we got recently from Mike McMahon. So before we get into today's video, I just want to go ahead and let everybody know, yes, I am still on the road. We're still kind of moving, essentially. We have arrived at our final destination, but now we're just kind of waiting for our house to finish closing out, and then we'll be able to kind of get more of a studio feel back into these videos. But it's still going to be another couple of weeks of hotel view. We'll probably get this hotel and maybe one more as we're kind of just moving around a little bit in the local area waiting for it to finish. But that's what's going on there. So again, I apologize for the terrible video and audio quality. Also, quick update on Wilbur. He's doing a lot better. Delilah actually got sick. Our other cat got sick on the way here. So she was sick for all several days of our travel, which was exhausting. And we were super concerned with her. But now that we've arrived here, she's kind of gotten a lot better. I think it was probably a little bit of stress. She was probably playing it up just so that we would stop putting them in their travel crates. But uh, so she's doing good too. So along with this quick little interview that Mike McMahon, who is the showrunner for the Lower Decks show, we also got two really fun little images that were associated with the show. There's obviously still no animation that we've seen just yet, but we did get two more images with the characters that I did want to go ahead and talk a little bit about and break them down with you as well. So during the interview, Mike McMahon was asked kind of some general questions about the show to kind of continue to temper people's expectations and kind of give off some information as to really what the show is going to be about over. All and we got some two rather really interesting little tidbits here, and actually things that I'm thinking are might actually be coming true. So, when asked if Mike McMahon was going to try to put some more recognizable Star Trek alumni inside of the show, he said, "Quote: Next Gen is my favorite era, and as a huge Trek fan, I would definitely want to try to use some of them so that I could not only build out the world but also work with some of my heroes. But I can't get more specific than that. You'll have to wait and see." So to me, this means likely to be that they're going to try to pull some kind of alumni into the show. Now, remember, this is kind of at the height of the TNG era. It's around 2360s is kind of the estimated date that we've been given so far. But we don't really have too much information beyond that. So what does that mean? Well, we could have all sorts of different characters kind of popping up. We could have DS9 characters. We could have potentially Voyager characters at some point. We could have a lot of the TNG characters who did make some appearances recently in Star Trek Picard. We could have Captain Riker on board the Titan with Deanna Troy doing some voiceover work. We could even have Admiral Picard or even Captain Picard because he may still, depending on the specific date that we're going to be in, he may still be in charge of the Enterprise before he moves on. On to you know his mission to save Romulus and stuff like that and we may even tie into some of that whole Romulan supernova saving mission thing in the show who knows but there's definitely a possibility here for these characters to kind of come on board and do some voice work Jonathan Frakes has been super involved in every single iteration of this new secret hideout Viacom CBS Star Trek so it's likely to assume that he may kind of snake his way in there and we might actually get to see the USS Titan be considered prime canon by being on this show which will be prime canon which would be really really honestly just so awesome we could also see patrick stewart kind of doing some voiceover work which he has done in the past in several animated movies and in television shows so he's definitely used to doing that kind of work so he's not certainly it's not beneath him in any way it certainly is in his wheelhouse so there's precedence there that he also might make an appearance and make like some kind of voiceover work and stuff like that that would be just i think a lot of fun to be able to see these characters kind of pop back in at the height of the tng era and maybe they could be like the heroes of the characters that are in the show Show, or maybe they're like these weird iconic figures that are like these angelic godlike badass you know starfleet officers that they can't even begin to fathom how great they are and they kind of aspire to be or something like that or maybe they kind of come across as different you know from us as the audience's perspective we think that these are the great heroes but from the low crew members perspective they may feel very differently about that which we kind of saw a little bit about i think there was a tng episode where we hung out with some of the younger crew members and how anxious they were around the senior command and also like even Riker and stuff like like that they were very anxious around them so we may be able to see something like that play out as well Mike McMahon also spoke a little bit about the overall tone of the show and really kind of its rating and what they're kind of shooting for in terms of the audience that they're kind of kind of getting at and he said quote it's definitely not a kid's show, but only because it's a little bit more complex than a kid's show would be. The fun of Rick and Morty is that it breaks down sci-fi tropes, and it is told through Rick Sanchez, who has a very specific, chaotic, nihilistic lens. Lower Decks treats mythological sci-fi things just as important as regular Trek shows, 
while finding new stories to tell just from a different angle. It's not disassembling mythological sci-fi things. It's treating them as important for everybody on the starship as it would be in a regular Star Trek show. So that's kind of good to know. I think people were already kind of expecting this to be kind of like a PG-13 rating, which I think is what they talked about in the article as well. It's not quite an R rating or maybe necessarily like a hard PG-13 where like Rick and Morty kind of gets into that. It's going to be kind of, in my mind, probably closer to like a Futurama style show as it's like kind of got more adult humor and more adult themes, but it's still kind of geared towards teenagers and like an older children's audience and for adults as well. Whereas like that Nickelodeon show, Star Trek Prodigy, is obviously going to be geared towards a much younger audience and be much more kid friendly and potentially kind of go grow up with the audience kind of similar to the way like Star Wars Rebels does and Star Wars the Clone Wars has done so that may be what Prodigy does but this one's clearly kind of shooting directly at the young teen teenage and then adult audience and kind of having some more adult humor attached to it. So along with the article, we also got two new images that were released through Entertainment Weekly, I believe. They were like their first look edition that we had there. We also, McMahon did the interview there with them as well. So let's go ahead and break down some of those images. So this first one here has what appears to be the like Lower Decks crew, the main crew, which is again like those younger subordinates who aren't the actual like leadership of the actual ship, mixed with the leadership of the ship. You've got the older captain who's kind of standing there in the back with his shirt ripped, very Kirk-esque. I love that. Everyone looks a little disheveled. We have the doctor, the Cassian in the background. She looks, you know, uh, all disheveled. It looks like she's covered in tar. I wonder if they're going to be fighting the tar monster that maybe killed Tasha Yar or something like that. I'm curious as to why everyone's kind of covered up with all this mud and all kind of like in this battle rattle kind of gear. And it looks like they're getting ready to do some kind of fighting. Uh, it doesn't, it's not quite clear if they're on the ship and there's like a red alert room or if they're on, it's like some kind of station or some other location, but they are holding those TNG styled phasers kind of the end of the TNG you know, kind of nemesis era styled phasers there, which I think is really kind of cool. I like seeing those there. And it's nice to see that there's going to be some clearly some action happening in this show. It's not just going to be people standing around doing like laughs or kind of boring like wrench and mechanic work. There's clearly going to be some action kind of associated with what's going on in the show. So the second image that I want to go ahead and look at has our main crew, which is the Lower Decks kind of team here, the younger lieutenants. Looks like they're sharing margaritas. And what's interesting here is quite a few things. Number one, is a character in the middle here has different colored boots. They're not black like the other characters, so I think that's kind of interesting. Also, one of the characters has already drank their drink, which I find interesting is, do they not drink? Do they drink too much and they just didn't decide to wait for the toast or what's going on here in the scene? I'm quite interested about that. We also have those really cool TNG-style L cars in the background. And what else is interesting here is that the other character on the left has her sleeves rolled up, which I think is kind of interesting. We don't really get to see that. We see some sleeves pulled up. We see some sleeves in kind of different positions and stuff like that but to have a character that's going to be predominantly walking around with their sleeves rolled up in uniform is something that we haven't really seen too much of in Star Trek and I'm very excited to see if there's like some conversations about that or if maybe that's like a running gag or something like that where she keeps getting yelled at by her commanding officer telling her to roll down her sleeves and they're not in regulations or something like that. I'm curious to see if that's going to be part of like her character and maybe played up for laughs or something like that or it could just be kind of like an attitude thing and, and kind of exploring a little bit of the people's ability you know that work in Starfleet their ability to kind to of you know kind of customize their outfit in a certain way you know me being in the service I do know that it is possible for you to be able to roll the sleeves on your jacket and you know during the summer months and stuff like that so it is definitely something that is relatable in real life and I just think it's interesting that they decided to go with that for her character it looks like she's going to have them rolled all the time I'm assuming so that's kind of cool I like that all right, guys and gals, that does wrap up today's very, very quick video. I just wanted to get this information out to all of you so you guys and gals had it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this bit of information. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe on this video and go ahead and get your comments up down below as to what you think is going on in this show and in these screenshots and what do you think that is happening with this drink or who are they fighting in that other one? Is it the tar monster from Tashiar? A completely different thing? Is it just like oil slick? I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And are you excited for the show? Are you getting more excited for the show? Do you want to see some cameo? from some you know some Star Trek alumni from all the other shows from the past you want to see something like that in an animated form are you excited to see the Titan and stuff like that throw up your comments up down below and we'll go ahead and get the conversation started live long and prosper my Trekkies